Machine learning is all about giving lots and lots of data to a computer algorithm so that that algorithm can learn something helpful uh, for the real world. In the case of autonomous cars, while well, cars need to figure out what their real world looks like, roads, uh, pedestrians, and so machine learning can be used to learn those features. I think the view on when driverless cars are going to become a reality has changed a lot over the last few years. If, I'd, if you'd asked me maybe five years ago, uh, I'd have probably said 20 to 30 years. Now, every year, that estimate is getting shorter and shorter to the point where we're going to start seeing driverless cars on the roads this year in very constrained environments. And I expect in the next five years, we'll start seeing real deployment of autonomous um, driverless cars. Um, delivering public services. You would expect that a self-driving car would handle this very much in the same way that a human would by first experiencing those environments and those conditions, uh, learning what's tricky about those in terms of uh, having a human in the loop and kind of showing them, guiding them through those behaviours and then extrapolating from there so it can deal with these sort of situations in the future. This is a very complex question and a critical question that we have to address soon. To start with, we have to look at the difference between a car that's owned by a, an individual, you or me, that is in autonomous or driverless mode, and a vehicle that's part of a fleet or a public service, which we are just using as a customer, which is autonomous and driverless. In the personal ownership instance, then in all likelihood, that will still be the driver. When we move to fleets of vehicles that are autonomous, then it's likely to be the owner or operator of that fleet. And the critical thing is, did they do anything that put people's safety at risk? If it wasn't their fault, then there won't be any issue, and they're likely to self-insure or just use a sing a, a, an insurance product that we ha are familiar with today. Understanding who's responsible if there's a crash with an autonomous car is, is a key question. Frankly, right now, it's not very clear. Uh, it can go many ways. So, for example, it could be the car company uh, that's responsible if there's a crash with the car. It could be the owner uh, that's responsible. And that really depends on how autonomous that car is going to be. Because there's a whole scale of autonomy uh, when you deploy autonomous cars, and that's going to impact who is responsible. Clarifying that is very important for the field.